Hey guys, we're Demir and Carrie Bentley from Lifehack Bootcamp. Today, we're going to be talking about a book that revolutionized the way we look at time. It's 168 Hours by Laura Vanderkam. So by trade, Laura is a successful author. She sort of fell into productivity and time management space when she was researching and interviewing a bunch of people for books and projects that she was doing. Yeah, and she has an extremely unique take on time management, which is that everyone who is trying to help you fix your time management problem is coming at it from an anecdotal space. Yeah. Like, this is how I fix my time management problem, and so it's definitely going to work for you. Yeah, like you've got all those gurus from the 1970s and 80s, and they're just sort of all arguing with each other, saying, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. But Laura wanted to look at it from a more analytical point of view. So she actually gathered a bunch of data, historical data, census data, personal studies that she did, just lots of data. And she came to a pretty simple yet shocking and maybe a little bit controversial conclusion that we have no idea where our time is going. In fact, we quite regularly misinterpret where our time is actually going. We're unreliable reporters of our time. And the proof lies in that mountain of data that she collected, paired with a handful of really powerful testimonials and stories of real people who seem to be able to do it all. Yeah, one awesome example she has is a woman who owns a multi-million dollar company. She raised four kids and she still had the free time in her days to go hiking. So she's truly living an empowered free lifestyle, even though she has a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, so here's the rub though. There is enough time in the day but you need to be rigorously committed to actually tracking your time in order to get back in control of your time. Yeah, which might be tougher than it sounds for most of us because in reality, we're really bad at estimating how much time we spend on tasks. And time tracking forces us to get real with how much time is spent where. It's sort of like calorie tracking to see where your calories are going, what you're eating. Exactly. So Laura's idea about time tracking is really simple. What if we approached every minute purposefully, as a choice, and we really paid attention to what gets our precious attention? And so it would be basically like starting with a blank slate, right? We'd have the liberty to fill our time with exactly what matters to us. Yeah, so now that you've got the general premise of this book, let's just talk about some of our key takeaways from this amazing read. So number one, you have to audit your time you know, for at least two weeks. Yeah. So more if you can swing it. What is auditing? Auditing is like financial auditing. You're actually going and saying, I don't know where my money went and going and finding and writing down everywhere where it went. Laura stresses that this is the only way that we can really start making informed decisions about our time and how we're spending our time and where it's actually going. Now, in our experience in Lifehack Bootcamp, we've had people do this, audit their time, and find 15 hours that they were spending reading the news. They didn't even realize they were spending 15 hours reading the news. Exactly. And one of our favorite quotes is from Peter Drucker. He says, what gets measured gets managed. And this never was more true than with a time audit. There is no more wondering where your time is going, no more idle complaining about there just not seeming to be enough hours in the day. You don't have to just feel like you've got enough time in your day to do what you need to do or feel like you're working on too much. You'll actually know exactly where your time is going. So you'll know, are you working too much? Are you watching too much TV? you'll actually know the answer to these questions that you've been circling around and just going by your gut. Now, one of our clients, a high level lawyer, really felt like she didn't have enough time in her week to get things done that she needed to get done. And once she did this challenge, she realized that she spent 11 hours a week reading or watching the news or doing social media in some way. And this completely shocked her. She literally said to me, Demir, if you had told me that I spent 11 hours of my day reading the news, I would have slapped you in the face and called you a liar. <laughs> yeah, and so for her to start incorporating things that she so desperately wanted to be doing on a daily and weekly basis, all she had to do was reallocate those, you know, 12, 13 hours spent reading the news to things like exercise and cooking and, and things that she actually wanted to be doing. Yeah, that's the really important takeaway from this book. So the second thing that we learned was that ideally, there should be nothing in your day that isn't actually advancing you towards your goals. Yeah. So Laura calls this kind of work 
the work that's part of your core competency. Mm, mm. So just like Cal Newport talks about deep work in his book, Deep Work, and Gary Keller and Jay Papasan talk about that one thing in their book, The One Thing, you should be spending the majority of your time on things that are pushing you forward, not just things that are keeping you afloat, the big stuff. So we talk way more about this idea in our video reviews for those two books, so make sure to check those out too. All right, so tracking your time down to increments of say 30 minutes or an hour takes a lot of work, right? A yeah. lot of focus and dedication. But once you've really gotten the hang of it, it allows you to allocate your time away from the shallow work that means nothing for your future and towards that deep work that's really gonna be driving you and your business forward. Absolutely, so our final takeaway is about what happens after you've finished your time audit. And it's all about how you reallocate your time. So number one is you have to control your schedule, really own it. This is the time audit. It allows you to really see where your time is going so that you can be able to put it where it needs to go. Number two, when you get to a task on your audit that you're not sure of its significance, Ask yourself, is this part of my core competency? Number three, if the answer to this question is no, this isn't part of my core competency, then you've got to either ignore, minimize, or outsource this task, get it away from you, do less of it. Number four, boost your efficiency by getting better at whatever your core competency actually is. So isolate those areas in which you know you can improve and then actively try to improve in those areas. So let's just talk about really quickly, why is this book a game changer, yes. right? Why do we put it on our list? Guys, it's really the first of its kind that instead of leaning into the idea of, oh, I just don't know I have enough hours in the day, she straight up said that was wrong. Yeah. The idea of 168 hours is that if we really paid attention to all of this time that we say we don't have, but we're clearly spending somewhere, we actually have room to do so much more than we're doing right now. Yeah. So. I have to say that in experience, and this is something that we have that maybe even Laura doesn't, we've actually been able to put this to work with hundreds and hundreds of clients, and she's right. There is enough time, maybe not to do everything that we want in life, but to do any one thing that we choose to be excellent at. We really only have one critique of the book. So we found the first half of the book, the part that's chock full of data and stories, to be extremely compelling. Yeah. And frankly, kind of terrifying and, and very inspiring as well, <laughs> at the, kind of at the same time. Absolutely. But, you know, as the book goes on, it sort of um, falls into a bunch of case studies about how different people audit and rage their time, and it really loses momentum as the book goes on. So we find that since everybody's life is so different, you know, seeing a bunch of other people's schedules, it really isn't that helpful to all of us, and it starts to really lose the initial momentum that she fired up in the first half of the book. Yeah, so if you're pressed for time, but you really want to reap the benefits of this book, we definitely suggest reading the first half of this book at least. Absolutely. But are you one of those people that should read this book? That's the question. Yeah, so if you feel like you're always running out of time, if you feel like you get to the end of your work week and aren't even sure if you've done anything of importance, or if you never feel like you've actually figured out that work-life balance, then you're the sort of person who should read this book. And we call this our hypnotism score, which means how enjoyable was this book to read? How much does it hypnotize you and influence you to actually put it to work? So as far as that, we give it a 7 out of 10. We certainly encourage everybody listening here to do a time audit. Absolutely. Even if you don't feel like you're struggling with your time all of the time, conducting a time audit is a tremendous, transformative, powerful experience. So how does this fit into our methodology here at Lifehack Bootcamp? Well, we certainly believe that there isn't enough time to do everything, but there's definitely enough time to do anything that you really put your mind to. Yeah, just to be clear, what does that mean? It means you can't be an astronaut and be an Olympic swimmer and you know write the great American novel, but if you really put your mind to something, there is the time to be a great father and a great husband and a great friend and family member and do something truly powerful and transformative with your life. We know that for a fact because we've seen it happen. So we completely believe in the idea of taking stock of the time that you have and how you're spending it and then reallocating it to things that are more purposeful and directive. Absolutely. So this book is a call to action for you to take radical ownership of your time. So radical, in fact, that you're tracking your time down to the half an hour block. And you might think, whoa, that's too intense for me. But actually, it's just intense enough. 
Yes, we have every single person we consult with or teach conduct that time audit for at least two weeks because radical clarity invites radical action. That's become a cornerstone of our Life Hack Bootcamp time management methodology. So how did this book actually transform our lives? Yeah, I like this question. Go ahead. Do you want to start? Yeah. So it completely transformed the way we both view time. Yeah. And we actually both did a time audit after reading this book for the first time. Yeah. So we felt so tired at the end of the day, like we didn't possibly have enough time to make the biggest possible progress that we could make. And when it turns out that we were actually spending hours and hours a week on Netflix and YouTube. In fact, when we saw that number calculated with all the time we wasted, we sort of looked at each other and went, oh my God, we could have written a book. We could have created an entirely new course over the last year. So the second you see that data and it looks you in the face, it, it's a call to action to step into something greater. Awesome. So now that we've talked about all this stuff in the book, what are some actionable steps that you can take right now? Yeah, so first you can acknowledge, and this is a hard one, that we're actually a bad judge of how we're actually spending our time. The way to get better at reporting on your time is to conduct this two week time audit to see yeah. where your time is really going. And in our Time Mastery product called the FAST Focus and Control Time Mastery, you can actually purchase that by following the link below. We actually provide a template for you to get started on your time tracking today. Yeah, and the last actionable step you can take is sitting down and noting all of the tasks and activities that you're currently doing that contribute to your core competency. And then actively try to include more of those activities in your day. So this book really works hand in hand with Cal Newport's deep work philosophy. So you can actually start tracking your deep work and counting it and saying, am I going up and doing more deep work that moves me forward? Or am I going down and doing less work and more shallow work? Absolutely. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, we're Demir and Carrie, and we'll see you in the next book summary.